This is Twit. We're going to let Rob go first, but he's sort of sneaking one in here because this is something that's going to show up in his list of predictions, too. Uh, but, Rob, what's new with the Steam survey? Well, I forgot to wear my New Year's outfit. Um, <laughs> and if I wasn't supposed to sneak these into my story and, and have them relate, then I apologize because everything I'm talking about today has to do with predictions one way or another. So... If you look back into 2023, okay, that's, that's not last year. It's the year before that. Linux was inching closer to that 2%, uh, peaking right around, I think, right around the 1.9% mark at its highest, as I recall. So I predicted in 2024, we would break that elusive 2% mark. Well, we smashed that goal early in 2024 we broke past that two percent mark and then then it fell back under right away and well i didn't bring that back up because i was sad but then again in november linux hit 2.03 percent uh, i guess it was adjusted down to two percent after the fact but it broke two percent again there but we aren't done yet December showed a real success story, topping out at an amazing 2.29%. In that survey, Windows lost some ground, losing 0.51%, bringing them down to 96.1%. While our actual close competitor in the area right now, hopefully not for long, we'll leave them in the dust, is macOS. Also, they also gained some ground with uh, gaining a 0.22 increase, which brought them up to 1.61%. <laughs> so with Linux, uh, continue to maintain a healthy lead over macOS. And as we pointed out in the past, Valve and their Steam Deck have a lot to do with the increase. Uh, you know, Showing that SteamOS accounts for about 36% of the Linux gamers. But this increase, you know, it still benefits all Linux users, as I say every time I bring it up. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, even those that aren't gamers will benefit as the market uh, market share grows and other software vendors port to Linux as well. Another interesting stat from the survey is how much Linux users love AMD. With 73.6% of Linux users using an AMD CPU uh, processor, though the numbers are a little weird since Intel CPU is at 29.6%, which if you add that up, brings the total to 103.2%. Um, hmm. I assume there's some weird rounding going on in the background. Maybe Maybe the details... Uh, have further breakdowns of the CPUs, and those numbers got rounded up a little too aggressively. It's close enough. Either way you look at it, AMT is quite a bit above Intel in the Linux gaming uh, ecosystem. For Linux enthusiasts, some other interesting numbers may be the breakdown of Linux distros themselves on the survey. Most interestingly, in the stats, is that Arch and Ubuntu based distros are the only things listed in the top 10. Red Hat based like Fedora doesn't even show up. Uh, likely buried somewhere in the other section at number 10. Other section being 27.47%. So when looking at the list on the on top, as stated earlier, SteamOS is 36.47%. Number two is Arch at 9.7%. Number three is flat pack at 5.73%, which could be split up anywhere. Maybe that's where the Red Hat users are. I don't know. Uh, number four is Ubuntu, uh, 24.04 at 4.79%. Uh, number five is another Ubuntu-based Linux, which is Linux Mint 22 at 3.79%, and I'll be joining these ranks soon. I promise. <laughs> Number six, uh, a little surprising, is Ubuntu Core 22. I didn't really know that was heavily used out there, um, but that's at 3.79%. And then number seven, another Arch-based, is Manjaro, 2.96%. Number eight, Ubuntu-based PopOS, 
And then Arch based Endeavor OS is at 2.66% and number 10 is the other section I mentioned earlier. And you know, looking at this, I was just thinking maybe one reason Fedora isn't in there is just because they change versions so often. Pretty much mm -hmm. almost everybody is every sixth, at least a year, they have to change because it's not supported anymore. Um, whereas a lot of these are LTSs, Linux Mint 22, Ubuntu 2404, which is still a pretty recent LTS. But a lot of these don't change as much. So if they're breaking them down into versions, that may have just split the, the count up of Fedora. So maybe you're not as bad off as you look, Jonathan, with your Fedora. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the surprises to me is Ubuntu Core and Endeavor OS. You know, I, I knew these were popular, but I didn't really realize they'd be in the top 10, at least, uh, for gaming. Uh, and in 2025, I'm already going to throw my prediction out here. We'll reiterate it later, but it ties into this. I predict Linux on Steam survey that for sure Linux will hit 2.5%. That's the easy one. But my stars, my shooting for the stars where I'm gambling on is I think I think there's a chance they'll get that 3%. You know, just for a moment, one month, we'll hit that 3% mark. Could be. Could be. Uh, Jeff, you've got something linked here that's actually kind of uh, on, on topic. Yeah, uh, so in the Discord, I linked uh, Linus from Linus Tech Tips, and he just released this today where it says, I can't keep waiting for Steam OS Linux Gaming Update 2025. So what he does in the video is he takes the Steam OS that you would get on your Steam controller, your game pad. On a Steam Deck, yeah. Or Steam Deck, and he loads it onto a PC. And they, he, he uses an AMD uh, CPU and GPU, so it works. He said they tried to use NVIDIA, and it didn't work. But he, he acknowledges that it's, it's not ready for prime time, and there's a lot of drivers and stuff that mm -hmm. aren't supported. But, uh, yeah, he plays it and basically says this thing rocks. You know, it works really good with the limitations that it's still the Steam Deck OS, so it's, it's geared to that uh, basic Should, uh... interface. You can't you can drop into the desktop version, but it's still limited right now. Mm -hmm. He should have just used something like Camara, but what's really shocking me about that story is the fact that how was he able to install Steam OS on a computer? I mean, that's a lot of workarounds. From what I recall last yeah. time, he couldn't even figure out the basics of Pop <clears throat> OS without breaking it. <laughs> well, this okay. this was something he said. But go ahead, Jonathan. I was going to say, to be fair <laughs> to him, that was a Pop! OS problem. Pop! OS broke Pop! OS. Now, they got it fixed within like 24 hours, but that was that was not an, a, a Linus problem near, near so much as that was a Pop! OS problem. Well, and last time, they should have, really, they should have stuck to like Ubuntu or Fedora or something pretty mainstream, and they, they kind of chose a little more adventurous path. <laughs> but on this uh, one... Hold on, hold on. We just looked at the survey. Fedora is not more mainstream than Pop! OS. In well, Steam. So you, in, you're talking about the in, Steam survey versus Linux users gaming. everywhere. We're talking about so, gaming, too. Right, but I'm talking about a distribution that you can just put in and load up. Because in that video, I've watched it, he talks about... Um, I can't... Little, you know, it's little, little Johnny Consumer is what he, he names this <laughs> imaginary person about. They can't... You know, I don't want to get in and have to mess with the command line and do all this stuff. And you know, he wanted something you just load up. And I would, I would argue that like an Ubuntu, a Fedora, you know, something like that, you can just load up. You don't ever have to get into the command line. Well, I and, agree with Ubuntu. Or an elementary OS. But as far as that goes, Pop! OS, you shouldn't ever need to go into the command line either. Apparently. Well, indeed. But he, he just was, had that. But but he was remember Pop OS was a little rougher when he tried it. That was what two years ago now. Yeah, I believe yeah, it's so. Come, it's come a long way since then. Yeah, maybe now now you can say that. But at the time, it was still a little beta ish. And and to be needs, fair, Steam OS on desktop is a little beta ish at this point too, isn't it? Wasn't there some oh, totally. some fun and how he even got that installed? Yeah, it. Well, it it. Pretty much installed. What it does is there's an image you can download to re-image yeah. your Steam Deck. 
and he just loaded that into a PC. But he did. They did make sure the PC had AMD hardware in it so that it would right. work because they talk about you know even if you go to the desktop like there's no printer support there's no nvidia support there's no you know there's a lot of stuff missing because it was tailored for the steam deck mm -hmm. but they keep talking about they're also talking about how steam os is they're they're predicting it's going to get released as a as a general distribution so that mm -hmm. everybody can just game yeah calling but, that a beta right now is probably a stretch i mean it's not at the moment not designed to support that software it's pre-alpha for our hardware i mean yeah but it's it's interesting though because you know there's been noises being made about valve coming out or not coming out directly but supporting people making other steam box whatever they're going to call it you know made for steam os hardware and that is that that implies supporting a little bit wider hardware set um you know, for a lot of people, ideally supporting NVIDIA. So you figure all that's got to be coming. Especially oh, since it's to Valve's advantage financially. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, and they're worried, and he talks about it. They were worried about back in the Windows 8 days about how Windows kept talking about they were going to have like the walled garden kind of like mm -hmm. Apple does and lock everybody out so you couldn't just load any third-party software. Yeah. And yeah, it was going to be the Windows kind of, Store and only the Windows Store. Yeah. With Windows and, and, apps, and they haven't really backed. Yeah, they haven't really backed off from what he was saying. Anyway, I I think they I thought they had, but it's still there. I mean, it's it's not. They haven't walked away from it. It's mm -hmm. kind of on pause a little bit, and then you know, with everything Windows Eleven is doing, not making people happy, and and the state of Linux in general is so much easier than it was. There's a lot more distributions you can just load on and go without having to fight and mess yeah. with them so much. Yeah, you pretty much these days, you only have to get into the command line and fight with stuff if you really want to. <laughs> yeah, and, and a lot of times I do because I'm Isn't running... Isn't that the game? Per yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's the game for us. That's why and, it's fun. And and that's why, uh, you know, people say, well, God, you got to get in there and you're doing all this. It's, well, yeah, because I'm running weird beta software on top of alphas and I'm wedging you know. things in that weren't maybe supposed to go together and... So it's it's a problem of my own design. It's not, you know, Canonical's fault in my case. Yeah, and, and I, I I see people pointing this out in our chat. They they talked about it in uh, the the Linus Tech Tip video that uh, right now the actual Steam OS on an x86 desktop is not the way that you want to go. There are other options that are going to be a lot easier. They were using that for a specific reason, and that is that they foresee that becoming an official solution soon. Um, but yeah. yeah, right now there are there are other options that are way better than trying to run yeah. Steam OS on your desktop. Maybe on that latest uh, ARM uh, system that System76 has got out? <laughs> you could, if you really wanted to, sure. Uh, well, and... And and they and, and in all fairness, in the video they do talk about that this is not meant for mainstream yet. This is this was kind of an experiment to see how it ran and mm -hmm. how much problems they would have. It is not desktop ready for general use, but yeah. it if you have the right hardware, it does give you the Steam Steam Deck uh, interface and all that, and it works just like the Steam Deck does. Yeah. Yep. And, and, a, and a side note, when you talked about AMD being popular, not only is it on the Steam Deck, if you look at a lot of top retailers, Intel CPU sales are not in the top 10. And the last time I looked it through the Amazon, like the first Intel CPU was the 12th gen. The new release was like number 15 or something like that. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. they were selling some of their old 12th gen CPUs more than they were selling the current gen. Yeah. And, and even one of the uh, 14900 Ks was above the current gen. So, you know, gamers usually keep up on hardware a little more in general. Not, you know, not universally true, but a little more than grandma checking her email and <laughs> <laughs> AM, AMD is just killing it in sales right now. On the CPU side, yeah, for sure. On the CPU, yeah. Yeah, g gamers do keep up with that because I, I just bought a gaming keyboard 
for uh, my kid. <clears throat> and when I watched the video on it, because I couldn't figure out how to turn the thing on, the, the power button was hidden. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> a but, power uh, button on a keyboard? Well, it's a wireless. Oh, okay. But uh, I, the, I, I thought it was funny. The guy said, the batteries last for 18 months. That's I change my computer more often than that. Yeah. I'm like, wow. 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 I I'm I'm still flabbergasted at the idea of a wireless gaming keyboard. Those are just not words that go together. But anyway, no. the other funny thing, the other funny thing I gotta quick say is it using keys. a microwave uh, radio? No, two keys were on upside down too. <laughs> it was a renewed device. The F was upside down and the Windows key was upside down. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there.